Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is on Wednesday, 21st of um, 21st of um, November 2023. I celebrate two years since I graduated with PhD in systematic theology. And today I want to talk to my students who will be doing the exams and I want to congratulate my daughter Amy who will finish her grade 6 national examination today. I want to challenge the students who will be doing the exams that college exams are not very, very complex. They are very approachable and workable and you can get the highest of the marks. Like all testaments are made, you may be asked very simple tasks like highlighting the importance of Old Testament which is three quarters of the entire Bible. Secondly, you may know that the Old Testament is the genesis or it is the origin of all the great biblical doctrines, including the doctrines of salvation, sin, redemption, and regeneration. All the great doctrines, even Christ is shadowed in the book of Genesis. You will be asked about the authorship of Pentateuch. There is the tradition of mosaic authorship and the documentary hypothesis by Julius Olison who believe that there were three sources that were used to compile Pentateuch by an editor, probably Ezra, J-E-D-P. But you know we defend the traditional mosaic authorship supported by Jews everywhere and at all times. You may be asked about the Exodus period and the Hiscos, who are shepherd kings, Semitic, and they went to Egypt, conquered Egypt, and reigned as pharaohs. But later they were deposed. And it is in Egypt that the children of Israel entered as they entered as a family and left as a nation. They helped in the formation of the nation of the children of Israel. You will deal with the patriarchs, and you will remember that they were shepherds, they were they were warriors and um, they were merchants, they were nomads, and you will know that they, they were landowners and farmers, as you saw in Isaac. Then we will proceed and look at things like um, uh, uh, the conquest of the promised land. And as you look at the conquest, you look at the methods that they used, including uh, military confrontation, infiltration, and assimilation. Then later, you are going to examine things to do with the seven vicious cycle, the kingship, and the origin and the reasons why kingship was established. Then later, you will have to look at uh, the Davidic, the United Kingdom, the divided kingdom, and idolatry that brought about the mess. Then you are going to look at the exilic and the post exilic period, where people lost their identity, their culture, and they were translocated and deported from their foreign land, to foreign lands. And when they came, there was syncretism, there was division, even the language was almost lost, and the ascent of the Aramaic language. As Jew, the Hebrew language was relegated to the periphery. You know that the Hebrew language, they wrote from left to right. There was the Akkadian language and there was hieroglyphics. We looked at all the books. In the Hebrew Bible, there is the Torah, the Nephim, the prophets, and the Ketophim, the writings. And uh, you know the historical books, Pentateuch, the historical books, um, the, the wisdom literature, and the Psalms are written for people everywhere. When Solomon was a young man, he wrote songs of Solomon. When he was an old, when he was a middle-aged man, he wrote Proverbs. When he was an old man, he wrote 
Ecclesiastes or Psalms of Solomon. Maybe declaring his repentance and uh, anguish and sorrow of the misdeeds and misadventures of his life. Later you look at all the prophets, Isaiah, there are many authorship uh, positions, but uh, we believe in the traditional type of authorship. Zechariah, there are people who believe that the second part from chapter 9 to 12 was written in a later period. But Zechariah and Haggai, Haggai was very practical, and Zechariah was very visionary. So it's always good to be practical and visionary. You look at psychology, you look at nature, nature controversy. But as I conclude, this is the season of Advent. Psalm 47 was read for us exceptionally well today. And I'm surprised that we are proud politicians. We are proud the people of this nation. Sometimes we applaud our tribal chiefs. Sometimes we applaud many people. But glory and honor should go back to God. All the genuine praise should go back to God, our King. In the time of Advent, we celebrate the coming King as He descended. Jesus in His nativity, nativity and His incarnation, He descended. The King who descended and took a human form. He became a theanthropic person. He was born of the virgin birth. He lived a virtuous life. And he died a, victor a vicarious death. And he resurrected victoriously. We celebrate the king who descended. Number two, we celebrate the king, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who ascended is now in heaven. Is our intercessor. He sits, he sits at the right hand of the Father. All power and authority have been given to him. We can pray through him. We don't need any other high priest. Our high priest and king is seated high above and exalted. We celebrate the king who ascended. And lastly, we celebrate the king who will come and reign. There is a day that he will come and judge. Whatever your situation, let us remember the king who descended, the king who ascended, and the king who will come back again. And this king is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us make him king of our lives, even as we do our exams. May the Lord richly bless you, may the Lord be with you, and may the Lord guide you. We celebrate the king, even as we celebrate the victory of our children in exams. We celebrate the King as we face the challenges of life. I pray for all my students as they do exams. May they succeed, may they excel. And may every candidate who is doing the exams and those who are facing challenges of life remember to exalt the King who descended, ascended, and the King who will come back anytime we pray that He will soon come. He will come soon. And the parousia. May the Lord bless you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.